Last chance. Fifty-fifty, huh? All right. So, so there's there's always the question, uh, you know, did you if you add energy, did you make the kinetic energy and potential energy go up? more, in other words, did you make it oscillate more and move faster on average, or did you break a bond, or maybe you did both of those things. Let's see, first of all, what it looks like. Okay, so that's what we have so far, these two things oscillating back and forth. Kinetic energy is, is sometimes high, sometimes low, there's some average kinetic energy and if I change the kinetic energy by adding, I think I said 1.0, so let me add 1.0 times 10 to the minus 21. Maybe I better make this as clear as I can. Let's make the box bigger, just in case, so that things don't run into the box, run into the walls of the box. So. I've added kinetic energy. Are they moving faster? Are they moving fast now? I added kinetic energy. Well, they're not moving very fast. And uh, I think they're going to disappear off the screen in a bit and if I made the box even bigger. Uh, once the total energy is up here, if you draw the kinetic energy, if this is the total, then the minimum potential energy is, when the potential energy, if this is the total energy, then the kinetic energy goes to zero right there. The minimum potential is the maximum kinetic, and then the kinetic comes back down, and by the time the potential gets to zero, the kinetic energy is down at the total energy. Yeah? Uh, based on the question, you never told us the values for uh, the E-bomb or the E-bomb and break. Technically, both um, answers should be correct, um, but on your simulation, you only uh, the I guess I told you that the total energy was minus 0.2. But uh, you never told us like, what energy the bonds break. I agree. I didn't tell you that. Could you, how many of you, those of you who thought that the bond was going to break, how did you decide that? That the, that the total energy was going to be up here? And if the total energy is up here, then the kinetic energy, which you can get from that and the potential, the kinetic energy looks something like this. When they are very far apart, they're still moving. The kinetic energy never goes down to zero at long distances. If the kinetic energy never goes down to zero, then there's no turning point at long distances and so they drift apart forever. So that's really what bond breaking is. Once you know that the bond, that the energy has gone up there so that when they're far apart and the potential energy is zero, they still have kinetic energy then they're going to drift apart forever and that's what a bond, that's what a broken bond is. One that, uh, I, I didn't tell you the numbers but I tried to give as many hints as I could by telling you what was going on here. Is it safe to say that when each total energy becomes positive, um, the bond is usually As long as the potential energy at large values of R is zero, when E total is greater than zero, even equal to zero, equal to zero or greater, then the atoms can get very, very far apart and infinitely far apart and infinitely far apart is a broken bond. Bonding is when they don't get very far apart. If the energy, total energy is less than zero, then there will come a time when the kinetic energy goes down to zero. There will come a distance when it goes down to zero and then they'll start back and that's bonded. If they're stuck together and they never get infinitely far apart, they are bonded. 
So what I was looking for there was bonding. I'm going to give you the other answers just because you don't quite know whether the average kinetic energy went up. I, I picked a number so the average kinetic energy is going to be around here and if you looked at this one and said what's the average kinetic energy there, well you know it might be about the same. I don't know, it's a little hard to tell what happened to the temperature. But it is easy to tell, I hope, that the bond energy went up. So that's what I was really looking for. Did the bond energy goes up? Because that's not the subtle one. This is a picture of a hundred atoms. All pairs of atoms have this kind of potential between them. Every two atoms attract the other, uh, sorry, every atom attracts every other atom with this kind of potential energy. Now, some of these atoms, like this one, well, this one, blue one here, and this one, right, red one right here, those are close together. The ones that are close together, distances something like this, have a significant potential energy of interaction. The ones that are farther apart, like this blue one here and that red one way over there, those are so far apart on this scale that the potential energy is utterly and completely negligible. The potential energy is only really important for the ones that are close together. The ones that are touching are obviously close together. Ones that are not quite touching, that might be important. At some point you get to neglect them. I can move this box around so that you can see what's going on. The atoms are, are oscillating around. I'm trying to remember what my next question is. I, I, I keep walking ahead of the questions. Okay, then I won't walk ahead of the question. I'll uh, ask you that. Uh, what state are these 100 atoms in? A solid, B liquid, C gas, D none of the above. I'll give you 30 seconds. 